Hello, my name is Leonardo Cameron. I am a 20 year old transgender male, and today I'm going to interview another transgender male about his experience in the community. His name is called Dimitri Rodriguez. Dimitri is also well known for his social media and being the first ever transgender male on TV. The TV show was called Go Hard and Go Home on the BBC. Dimitri is a 24 year old transgender male. He's been transitioning since he was 15 years old. I met him through TikTok and he became my best friend ever since. I class him as an older brother because I'm also transgender and he helps me a lot through my transition. So my name is Dimitri Luis Rodriguez. I'm 24 and I'm a trans man that does social media and basically fell upon it from just talking absolute shit on the internet about my transition. Yes. And that's how I found you. Was it being transgender content creator? It's been a bit of a whirlwind. I'm very lucky that I've not had near enough, near enough as much hate as what other people have had. I don't really get much transphobia. So when people come to me like, oh, how do you deal with transphobia abuse? And I'm just like, I don't know how to deal with it because I've never had it. So uh, how are you so open about being trans online? I think I outed myself before anybody else had the opportunity to out me and that's the way that I've seen it. I just, I posted one video that caught the eye of the media that sort of blew up my social media and then everyone was just like, we've not seen anybody talk openly about something. I just, at the end of the day, like me being trans isn't my whole identity, it isn't who I am as a person, it's like a whole. There's much, there's so many more cogs that make me work. For me personally, I don't, make my whole trans like my whole personality about my transition which i see a lot of people try and do on social media there's a lot of trans men out there and trans women out there that make content the reason why they don't get the much reach is because they're not they're just speaking about transition in general if you type in transgender man onto tiktok it's going to bring up a load of people you've got to i think the reason why i'm so open with it is just because i wanted to be myself because i didn't want to sit there and be some walking talking robot how did your parents react of you coming out they took it hard um at first my mum and dad pretty much thought it was a phase like a lot of parents do it was more so my mum that was more accepting in the beginning than my dad but i think it was just a denial thing and i think it is something to do with dads because it yeah. seems like a lot of mums are more accepting but i feel like dads in their way my dad is 60 so like he was yeah. doing section 28 scoop and all that I feel like in his day and age, it wasn't really spoken about. My dad thought the word transvestite is the same thing for a trans person. And now I had to tell him, no, dad, that's cross dressers and trans people. We aren't the same. <laughs> my, with my dad, but the same thing, we used to be our dad's little girls. So, so yeah. that's, we used to be their little babies, like little princesses. 100%. Like, I think like I was always, I was very much until probably about the age of 11, I was a daddy's little girl when I was a female. And then I've, now it's just like I'm um, all my mum, but yeah, you put me the next to each other. We look very similar as well, so I think that's what's bit sweet. He hasn't got this yet, but I do. So I think that's what he uh, secretly hates. He's really jealous. Out and about since I was fifteen. It's nearly ten years since I've been out, and hearing all these new terms come into place. Whereas it's something maybe your age, Leo, is probably easier to have them like not their mind moulded, but easier to understand something more yeah. than somebody like me that I didn't, like non-binary, for example, that wasn't a thing to me until TikTok because I didn't know what it was. Generally same. I went to you, I was like, what's non-binary? I was when you asked me and you were like, what's a non-binary trans person? I went, Leo, that's a different kettle of fish. I don't even know. <laughs> it's why I sort of steer away from those topics when people ask me because I don't want to want misinform anybody. But secondly, that's not my story to tell. I don't understand it when people go, oh, well, you've said that person's trans mask. And I literally laugh. I don't even know what trans mask is myself. So why would I be calling it anybody else? And this is the thing about when I say to people, transgender is not just like, like there's people, like everyone's different in terms of their transition. Mm. So when I start, so. I think I might ask them really nicely to go like a lower dose to see how I am, see how I react. But, you know, they normally start you off on go, but obviously I did the non-conversional way of transitioning. I was naughty and self-medicated because the waiting list, yeah, they're not as bad as they were now. They were still bad at the time. And I was thinking, well, see, nobody do this. The way that I did it was that I knew if I prescribed hormones for at least three months the gp would see it as self-harm and then i'd get properly taken care of like and it's sad that i have to do that but yeah. if i needed antibiotics which are going to stop me from getting an infection i get them straight away but gender affirming treatment that is meant to be life-saving why can't i get help for that 
even trans people can be trans. So we've watched it happen within the community where we've seen other trans people called misgender another trans person, or right. I've had it happen to me. Like it's it doesn't mean just because you're friends with somebody or you belong to a certain community doesn't mean it gives you a free pass to go, oh well, I can misgender somebody or I can be transphobic or I can have these type of views. And touch more with them their masculine side. And I feel like since I've come out, there's an expectation for all trans men to look the way that I do, which I don't think that's fair because not every, like, and this is no disrespect to any of a trans man, it's genetical. Like, for me, I was naturally high in testosterone. My ethnicity, I'm half Italian and I'm half Persian. I'm naturally thick, dark haired. Yeah. Hence why beards run in both sides of my family. When I have grown trans men going to me, oh, well, how, like, I've even said, you've had pretty much, I think you've come to me going, how do I grow facial hair? I go, mate, I can't fucking, yeah. my brother can't grow any, but I, <laughs> you know, I'm so, so like... it's very much like, yeah, yeah, no. Hey, you know what, mate? This didn't come in until I was like 21, and I've been on hormones since I was 18. I grew like little bits, but I didn't fully understand it until female puberty started. And that's why I say to people, even though hormone blockers, yeah, they're brilliant, at least let a child have a year of, of puberty as a female or a male before giving them that. Because even with a year, if you give them a year, still putting them onto hormone blockers, fair enough, that's the reverse. That's reversible changes. But at least giving them a year is not really going to affect much into their transition, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, yeah. before you go top surgery, they ask you what your boob size is. So I have to go to Marks and Spencer's and get measured. But to be fair, we have to do it for, well, you don't have to anymore because you're titless. Yeah. Uh, but we have to measure every time like we're buying your binder. Remember to never use binders from Amazon, Wish, eBay or Timu. Never use the ones with the clips. They will give you serious damage and may affect your top surgery results. Please do not wear a binder that is too tight. Please measure properly and always size up. I knew what my chest size was because obviously, you know, when you get measured for like shirts and stuff, I just gathered it off that and took two centimetres either side. What I always did was did it with like a hoodie and I made my mum yeah. and double check. I made my mum because... Uh, if you just do it with a sports bra, I feel like it doesn't give you much. It doesn't give you too much leeway with it because I tried okay. it. It got to a point where I just I stopped binding unless I was going out. So I thought, well, I may as well just free the tits whilst I'm at home because no one's going to see them. And this is what I say to trans like that are like binding for hours on end whilst at home. Who is realistically going to see you? Nobody. It says on no. the website eight hours and then take it off for 10, 15 minutes and then pop it back on. Put it back on. That's what I say. It's really hard for people that, like, for me, I was working in the prison service and I was working 12-hour shifts. Yeah. So what I used to do on my hours break is I used to, like, pop it down. Let's talk about your surgery experience and the process of you starting testosterone with your whole black market. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Let's talk about that. I brought oh. what I thought was actual proper testosterone. What I thought was assistant on it wasn't. It was cattle testosterone. I brought it off a bodybuilding website. I was buying it every month. It was about 60 quid. I ended up having a heart attack at 19 years of age at Rural Halls Hospital in Birmingham. And they, I had to have my, obviously, the needles and everything in my bag. And they tested it. And it was cattle testosterone. Testosterone. They said to me that I basically put my heart under so much pressure, my testosterone levels were through the fucking roof that it caused me a heart attack. Um, from then on, they deemed it as I was self harming, which essentially I was self harming my body, which I didn't realise. They then bridge prescription to me straight away, and they put me onto testosterone. Top surgery. Top surgery is something that a lot of trans men get. So it's basically getting our chest removed. So we have three types of surgeries. There's peri. So peri, they cut around the nipple and push all the fat out. Um, but you can't replace your nipples. Keyhole's pretty much the same, apart from they put like a little scar underneath and pull from that. Double incision, what Dimitri has and what No Offense has. I don't know if you guys know who No Offense is, but Dimitri also talks about him later in the documentary. No Offense is a well-known trans guy. You might know him by his song called Asthma Attack, maybe Stupid, maybe Day Headache. I'm not sure, if you don't know him, Go check them out. So basically, it's incisions underneath the boob and they take all the fat out and they have to replace the nipple. So they sew it all together and then put, sew back the nipple on, basically. Yes, you can choose if you want to keep your nipples or not. Most likely, a lot of people I know keeps the nipples. In terms of surgery, I've had top surgery, but I paid for that myself because the NHS waiting list is ridiculous. And I paid 6,700 a night. You had it in Scotland. Um, cosmetic care. Been living. But you know what? Yes, I love Scotland. Like 
you, you guys are more friendly, do you know what I mean? It wasn't even just about, I could have gone to Turkey and got my, my move four grand. Same I paid, Brad. yeah, same what Brad did. Like, I was going to go to Nida, but I wanted to stay in this country just because of my health problems anyway. I didn't want to risk it, travel abroad, have any complications. And I didn't like the fact is that they had to carry around drains. Whereas I don't really know anywhere in the UK that you have to whack around. It's just like I've said to people, when you go for top surgery consultants, don't just base it on somebody else, like shop around. And if you feel like, get a feel for it, because I knew that I wanted to go with Dan before I'd even met him, because one, I'd seen other people's results, but then I met him and he was lovely. Like, you've got to fit certain criteria, especially like BMI and things like that. I had to come down and wait for top surgery <laughs> because I was overweight. I had to drop two stone. Okay, I didn't get to see mine, which I'm fuming about, but they do test... They do in the UK test it for, for breast cancer as well. Like Noah bled through hormones. Now I thought it was fucking normal till I watched his video and I went to my GPs going, I'm bleeding. They're like, oh no, we need to give you a blocker. Mm. Like it's things like that. And me and Noah were having conversations about it. He said, I'm really glad that I'm open and honest about documenting my whole transition because he said, there's not many people out there that will do it the way that you do it in the way that I've done it. And it's not us both bearing our own trumpets of, oh, we can be the better trans influencers. You've got to be open and honest if you want to. And it's what infuriates me is, is when I do see, and it upset me a little bit because for me, I waited seven years since coming out, which is a very fucking long time. It was bittersweet seeing some of my friends that had only been out for a year or two years go and get surgery. And I was sat there like, why is it not me? But it's going to get to a point where when I have my lower surgery, I'm not telling nobody until it's done. Because I know that many... I've already said, like, I'm getting an advice website. Because the amount of people that are going to ask... To, that already asked me to see it when I ain't got it yet, they may as well pay for it. It's the <laughs> way I see it. Well, I'm going to edit you.